Hi, and welcome to Minute Mix Tips. Today I want to talk about some basic terminology, really get back to basics here. And I, uh, uh, a friend of mine, a great guitar player and vocalist named Reno Romano said, Hey Brian, love watching your videos, but what's the difference between a limiter and a compressor? <laughs> and what's a noise gate and what's an expander? And I, and I realized that a lot of people today are uh, faced with engineering tasks that uh, uh, never were explained to them before, and, and uh, they're, they're musicians who are, are producing and, and uh, working with Pro Tools. And so let's get back to basics, and today I want to talk about uh, the difference between an expander and a gate. Next week we will go into the difference between a compressor and a limiter. So let's start with uh, a kind of basic rule uh, that describes the differences between compressors, limiters, versus noise gates and expanders. And that rule is compressors and limiters make loud signals softer and soft signals louder. And expanders and gates make loud signals louder and soft signals softer. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this very nice uh, graphic on a FabFilter Pro G that will explain the factors that turn an expander into a gate and vice versa. So I've got this on a snare drum, let's take a listen and take a look. And what we can see is that this um, snare drum is represented by these horizontal lines. And this is the signal I want to get through, the silvery one, silver blue, and the shaded one is the signal I don't want to come through. And you can hear that this is working quite well. This, if you've never taken a look or heard the term before, is the uh, so-called knee setting. And this looks like a person's knee. Here's her thigh, here's her knee, and here's her shin. And this is considered a very hard knee. That is to say the signals that uh, reach this point uh, in the timeline versus the threshold will be immediately affected by the settings that I employ elsewhere in the plugin. So this is a hard knee. Now watch what happens. Here's the signal again. Below the threshold, above the threshold, boom very fast reaction by this device. Let's soften the knee. It's like the person sort of bends their knee a little bit, makes it softer, and you can see now uh, a little bit more of that signal. See down here, that can come through because the setting isn't reacting as quickly or as harshly. The other thing that would happen is that if I reduce the ratio, see more signal is coming through. Now I've taken this noise gate setting and turned it into an expander. Furthermore, the threshold setting, of course, will affect how a noise gate works versus a, an expander. Hold and look ahead, that's another function that we'll go into in a more advanced tip video. Uh, and release are, are similar to uh, the attack and release that you've seen in compressors and limiters and that a fast attack will grab that signal quicker, which I don't like so much for a gate or an expander, and the release will have a larger effect. Let's play that snare again. Again, a lot more signal is going to come through with a slower release because the gain reduction is taking longer to take hold. Here's the fast release. Boom, right down. Here's a good example of what's being done, and let's make that knee hard again. And there's your noise gate versus your expander. Okay. Tougher ratio, tougher noise reduction. Okay, here's another example of a noise gate versus an expander. This is a one button difference. I'll bypass this. This is going to be a subtle change. And this, by the way, happens after this in my signal path. If you look over here, I've got the Pro G, then the SSL channel. So this didn't have to work quite so hard. So I had it set as an expander, just gentle. And I do this mainly because I kind of like the sound of the fast attack of this gate on this particular channel strip. And when you press this button in, turn its threshold up, there's that gating sound again. And there's the more gentle expander. On this device, the gate button really acts as a ratio 
curve and a knee curve, and it does what this was doing with, uh, with the more uh, user available options. This one button takes care for you, setting the ratio and the knee with one button. Now one last thing I want to show you today is a more sophisticated kind of expansion and this I have on the stereo bus of almost all my mixes and I unsold the snare drum so we can see well, let me solo the snare drum again actually so you can watch this expander in action uh, and with just the snare drum now this employs a technique called upward expansion which is a user set and it happens here in this box and I've set the range of all these expanders this is a multi-band expander three crossover points at 100 1,000 and 10,000, so you have very high, most of the highs, low mids and very lows that are being affected differently. Uh, but my settings are similar. Uh, all are at a one and a half uh, ratio, which is an expansion setting. Remember, the lower the ratio, the gentler the curve. And you can see how this works. With that snare, you see the, the high frequency is very fast. So it sees that high frequency transient and expands it. it. It pushes it upwards via this range setting. The other three uh, have a slower uh, envelope and you can see them sort of staying up all the time. So when applied to an entire program, this setting evens out the frequency spectrum so that they basically all get a similar amount of attention. Now you can then change that in several different ways, but I really want to just focus how this expander and limiter works together. I know I'm doing limiting next time, but watch how this expanded program now can be fed into this peak limiter. and really get some brick wall limiting after the frequency spectrums have been evened out by these expanders. That's a very useful setting for this uh, device. And I call it the CJ cookie jar bus expander start. So that's about all we have time for today. Thanks for watching and happy mixing. We'll see you next week.